The Rakshaw Country and the Sea Market is a short story by Pu Songling first published in Strange Tales from a Chinese studio. Told in two parts, the story follows the adventures of scholar merchant Ma Ji and is one of the first Strange Tales entries to be translated into English. Some critics have argued that the Rakshaw Country serves as social commentary on topics including hypocrisy, conventional standards of beauty, and nationalism. Ma Chi, whose name is Long Mei, is the son of a merchant. He was born with a personable personality and elegant demeanor. He was suave and suave since he was a child. He liked singing and dancing. He often acted with the disciples of Li Yuan and dressed up as a Dan Jiao with a brocade scarf on his head. At the age of 14, Ma Ji was admitted as a scholar in the county and was very famous. His father was old and frail, stopped his business, and lived at home. He said to Ma Ji, with these few books, I can't eat when I'm hungry, and I can't wear clothes when I'm cold. My son should take over from my father in business. From then on, Ma Ji gradually learned how to do business. Ma Ji went overseas to do business with others, and the ship was blown away by the strong wind. After several days and nights, they came to a city. The people there were so ugly that when they saw Ma Ji coming, they thought it was a monster, and ran away one after another, shouting and screaming. Ma Ji was terrified when he saw this scene, and when he knew that the people of the country were afraid of him, he used it to bully the people of the country. When he met someone who was eating, Ma Ji ran forward. People ran away in panic, and Ma Ji ate the leftover food. After a long time, I entered the mountain village. Among them, there are also those who look like human beings, but they are like beggars in rags. Under the horse resting tree, the villagers dared not go forward, but look at it from afar. Soon after, Ma Ji entered a small mountain village. There are also people who look like people, but they are all in rags, like beggars. Ma Ji was resting under the tree, and the villagers did not dare to approach him, but only looked at him from a distance. After a long time, the villagers felt that Ma Ji could not eat people, so they gradually approached him. Ma Ji talked with them with a smile. Although the language was different, he could still understand half of them. So Ma Ji told his story. The villagers were overjoyed and told their neighbors that the visitors did not catch and eat them. However, the ugly person would leave after just one look and finally dare not approach. Those who approached had the same facial features and positions as the Chinese, and they set out wine and food together to invite Ma Ji. Ma Ji asked them why they were afraid of themselves, and replied, I heard from my grandfather that there is a China 26,000 miles to the west, and most of the local people look very strange. But I only heard it, and I believe it today. This is true. Ma Ji asked them why they were poor, and replied, What our country values is not the writing, but the appearance. Those with the most beautiful appearance will be the central ministers, the next ones will be the local officials, and the next ones will be worse. Children can also be favored by the nobles, and they can have leftovers to support their wives and children. People like us are regarded as ominous by our parents when we are born, and are often abandoned. Those who can't bear to abandon they are all for the purpose of passing on the family line. Ma Ji asked, what is the name of this country? He replied, it's called the Great Raksha State. The capital is 30 miles north of this place. Ma Ji asked to take him for a sightseeing trip. So the people got up and led Ma Ji to go together. They arrived at the capital after the sky was bright. The capital city wall is made of black stone. The color is like ink. The pavilion is nearly a hundred feet high. But the roof is seldom covered with tiles, but covered with red stones, 
and the broken pieces of red stones are picked up and rubbed on the nails, which is no different from cinnabar. At that time, the palace was retreating from the court, and a car with a gorgeous canopy drove out of the court. The villagers pointed out, this is the Xianghua. Ma Ji saw that Xianghua's ears had grown backwards, he had three nostrils, and his eyelashes covered him. Eyes, like curtains. Then several people rode out of the palace. The villagers said, this is a doctor. They pointed out their official positions one by one. They all looked hideous and weird, but as their positions gradually decreased, they became less ugly. Not long after, Ma Ji was on his way home. When people saw Ma Ji, they shouted and yelled, and ran away and trampled him like they had encountered a monster. The villagers tried their best to explain, only the people on the street dared to stand in the distance. After Ma Ji returned to the village, all the adults and children in the middle school knew that there was a stranger in the village, so the gentry and officials rushed to open their eyes and asked the villagers to invite Ma Ji to visit. However, every time Ma Ji came to a house, the gatekeeper closed the door, and men and women secretly watched and discussed from the crack of the door. After a whole day, no one dared to meet Ma Ji. The villagers said, there is a halberd bearer here. He used to go abroad for the former king. He has seen many people. Maybe he won't be afraid of you. Ma Chi went to visit the halberd bearer. Regarded as VIP. Looking at Jiji Line's appearance, he looked like a man in his 80s or 90s, with protruding eyes and thick curly beard, just like a hedgehog. Gigi Lang said, in the early years, I was ordered by the king to undertake the most missions, but I never went to China. Now that I am over 120 years old, and I can meet people from the previous country, I have to report it to the emperor. However, I have retired to the mountains and forests, and I haven't stepped on the steps of the imperial court for more than 10 years. Tomorrow morning, I will walk for you. After finishing speaking, serve wine and dinner as a host's hospitality. After drinking for several rounds, the halberd man called out more than 10 singers and dancers to perform songs and dances in turn. These people looked like yikshas, their heads were wrapped in white brocade, and their red clothes were dragged on the ground. They don't know what lyrics they are singing, and the singing and rhythm are very weird. The man who held the halberd was very happy, and asked Ma Ji, does China have these kinds of music and dances? Ma Ji said, yes. The owner said happily, it's amazing. The singing is like the sound of the phoenix and the dragon's roar. I've never heard it before. The next day, the man holding the halberd went to the court and recommended Ma Ji to the king. The king gladly issued an edict to receive him. However, two or three ministers said that Ma Ji's appearance was strange, and he was afraid that he would frighten the holy body, so the king did not issue an edict. Ji Ji Lang went out of the palace to inform Ma Ji, expressing his deep regret. After a long time, Ma Ji and the Ji Ji Lang got drunk from drinking, danced their swords, smeared coal on their faces, and pretended to be Zhang Fei. Ji Ji Lang thought this was very beautiful, and said, Please go to the Prime Minister with Zhang Fei's face, and the Prime Minister will definitely be willing to appoint you, and a generous salary will not be difficult to get. Ma Chi said, Oh! It's okay to play games, how can we change our appearance to seek glory and magnificence? Ji Ji Lang insisted on him to do so, and Ma Chi Tsai agreed. Ji Lang held a banquet, invited the important officials in power to drink, and asked Ma Ji to put on a good face and wait. Soon, the important officials in power came, and the halberd bearer asked Ma Ji to come out to meet the guests. The official in charge said in amazement, it's so strange. Why is it ugly before, but now it's beautiful? They drank with Ma Ji and were very happy. 
Ma Jipo danced and sang a Yang tune, and everyone in the audience was overwhelmed by it. The next day, the ruling officials put up memorials one after another to recommend Ma Ji. The king was overjoyed and sent an envoy to summon Ma Ji with a banner. After the meeting, the king asked how China's way of governing the country was, and Ma Ji stated them one by one. When the revelry was in full swing, the king said, I heard that you are good at playing elegant music. May I let you listen to me, voice? King Daiyue appointed Ma Ji as his next doctor that day. Ma Ji often attended the king's private banquets, and the favor he received was extremely unusual. After a long time, all the officials in the court were quite aware of Ma Ji's disguised appearance. No matter where Ma Ji went, he always saw people whispering about him, and they were not very close to him. Feeling isolated so far, Ma Ji became uneasy, and then went to the Shu and asked to resign and retire, but the king did not agree. He also asked for a short vacation, and the king gave him three months of vacation. So he took a stagecoach, loaded with gold and jewels, and returned to the mountain village. The villagers knelt to greet him. He distributed the money to those who had been friends with him in the past, and the villagers cheered thunderously. The villagers said, We small people have been rewarded by the doctor. Tomorrow we go to the sea market, and we should be able to find treasures and playthings to repay the doctor. Maji asked, Where is the sea market? In the market, sharks from all over the world gather there to sell their treasures, and twelve kingdoms come to trade there. There are also many gods and men playing games. There are clouds and clouds covering the sky, and there are occasional waves. The nobles value their own lives and dare not endure hardships. If you are in poverty, give us your money and let us buy rare treasures on your behalf. Now it is not far from the day of rushing to the sea market. Maji asked them how they knew when there would be a sea market, and replied, Whatever you see there are red birds flying around on the sea, and there will be a sea market in seven days. Maji asked the date of departure, and wanted to visit the sea market with the villagers. The villagers persuaded Maji to value his identity. Merchants crossing the sea, are you still afraid of wind and waves? Soon, someone came to the door and paid money to buy treasures. Ma Ji and the villagers loaded the money on board. The boat can accommodate dozens of people, with a flat bottom and high railings, ten people row the oar together, stirring up layers of waves, and the boat moves like an arrow. After walking for about three days, I saw from a distance that in the sea with rippling water and clouds, there were layers of pavilions, and trading ships were as dense as ants. After a while, they arrived at the bottom of the city, and saw that the bricks on the city wall were as high as a person, and the city tower soared into the sky. They moored their boats and went ashore to enter the city. They saw the dazzling treasures on display in the sea market, most of which were not found in the world. At this time, a young man came on a fine horse, and the people in the city ran away one after another, saying that he was the third prince of the east. When the prince passed by here, he looked at Ma Ji and said, This is not a foreigner. Immediately, someone who opened the way for the prince came to ask Ma Ji's hometown. Ma Ji saluted at the side of the road and stated his birthplace and surname one by one. The prince said happily, since you are here, it is really a fate. So he gave Ma Ji a horse and asked him to ride side by side with him. They left the West City. As soon as they reached the shore of the island, the horse they rode screamed and jumped into the water. Ma Ji was so frightened that he screamed out of his voice. I saw the sea water parting to the two sides, like a tall wall standing tall. Soon Ma Ji saw a palace, the roof beams were decorated with tortoise shell, and the roof tiles were paved with bream scales. Ma Ji got off his horse and bowed his hands in salute, and entered the palace. 
Looking up and seeing the Dragon King standing high above, the prince said, I was wandering in the market, and I met a Chinese sage, and brought him to meet the king. Ma Ji went forward and danced to salute. The Dragon King said, Mr. Ma is a man of talent and learning, and his articles will surely surpass Chu Yuan and Song Yu. I think Mr. Lao Ma will write an ode to Haishu with a pen as big as a rafter. This is a beautiful essay. Ma Ji cowed out to the ground and accepted the order. So I brought Ma Ji a crystal inkstone and a dragon hyena pen. The paper is as clean as snow, and the ink is as fragrant as orchid. Ma Ji immediately wrote more than a thousand words and dedicated them to the hall. The Dragon King said very appreciatively, Mr. Ma has outstanding talents, and he has brought glory to the water country a lot. He called all the dragon clans together to drink in Saishia Palace. After several rounds of drinking, the Dragon King raised his glass to Ma Ji and said, I have a beloved daughter who has not yet found a suitable partner. I hope to marry you, sir. Maybe you still want to marry me? Ma Ji left the table, full of gratitude, and agreed with shame and anxiety. The Dragon King said something to the people around him. Soon, several court ladies helped the Dragon Girl out. Then the Pei Wan made a ding-dong sound, and the music suddenly played. After the worship, Ma Ji took a peek and saw that the Dragon Girl was really a beautiful fairy. After the Dragon Girl finished her worship, she got up and left. Not long after, the banquet was over, and the little maid with double maidservants lit a painted palace lantern and led Ma Ji into the side palace, where the dragon girl sat there with heavy makeup, waiting for Ma Ji's arrival. I saw that the coral bed was decorated with eight kinds of jewels including gold, silver, pearls and agate, and the tassels on the curtains were embellished with big pearls, and the bedding was fragrant and soft. Just after dawn, the alluring young maids came to wait on them and stood beside them. After Ma Ji got up, he quickly walked out to worship and thank him. Ma Ji was made the captain-in-law, and the Fu was sent to Zhuhai. All the dragon kings of the seas sent special personnel to congratulate them, and rushed to send invitations for their concubines to the banquet. Ma Ji wore splendid clothes and rode a hornless green dragon. Someone shouted in front and surrounded by people behind, and a group of people came out of the palace. Dozens of warriors on horseback are all wearing carved bows and carrying white staffs on their shoulders, shining in brilliance, filling the road. Along the way, someone was playing the zither and someone was playing the flute in the car. It took only three days to swim all over the sea. Since then, the name of Ma Long Media has been resounding all over the world. There is a jade tree in the Dragon Palace, it is thick and can be embraced, the trunk is as crystal and transparent as white glass, in the middle there is a light yellow heart, slightly thinner than an arm, shade. Ma Ji often sang and chanted with the dragon girl under the tree. The tree is full of flowers, similar to gardenias. Every time a petal falls, there is a crisp sound of gold and jade. When you pick up the petals, it looks like a red agate carving, shining brightly and cute. From time to time, there is a strange bird singing in the Dragon Palace. This bird has golden and green feathers, and the feathers on its tail are longer than the bird's body. Whenever Ma Ji heard the call of this bird, he would miss his hometown, so he sent along, I have been away from my parents for three years. Whatever I think of this place, I cry and sweat profusely. Can you come back with me? Do you want to go home? The dragon girl said, I can't go with you because the roads of immortals are blocked. I can't bear to deprive you and your parents of family happiness because of the love between husband and wife. Let me slowly think of a way. She could not help but shed tears when he heard this. The dragon girl also sighed and said, it's bound to not be the best of both worlds. The next day, 
Ma Ji went out and returned. The Dragon King said, I heard that you are homesick. Can you pack up and set off tomorrow morning? Metal! Please let me go home to visit relatives temporarily, and I will try to find a way to get together again. In the evening, Long Niu held a banquet and said goodbye to Ma Ji. Ma Ji wanted to set a date for a meeting in the future, but the Dragon Girl said, the relationship is over. Ma Ji was extremely sad. The Dragon Girl said, going home to take care of your parents shows your filial piety. The gatherings in life are scattered, and the whole life is like a day and a night. What's the use of being a child who is sad and crying? From then on, I will keep your chastity for you. Keep righteousness for me. The two places are of the same heart, that is, husband and wife. Why stay together day and night, to grow old together? If anyone breaks today's oath, the marriage will be unlucky. If you are worried that no one will take care of the housework, just take a maid as a concubine, I have another thing to tell you. Since I got married, I seem to be pregnant. Please name the child now. Maji said, it's a girl, it can be called Dragon Palace, it's a boy, it can be called Fuhai. Dragon Girl asking Maji to leave a token, Maji took out a pair of ruby lotus flowers obtained in Luochak Kingdom and handed them to Long Nu. The Dragon Girl said, three years later, on April 8th, you can come to the South Island by boat, and I will return my own flesh and blood to you at that time. Then she took out a fish skin bag, filled it with jewels, and handed it to Ma Chi. Said, treasure this thing, and it will not be used up by generations of food and clothing. Just as the sky was slightly bright, the Dragon King set up a farewell banquet and gave Ma Ji many gifts. Ma Ji said goodbye and left the Dragon Palace. The Dragon Lady took Ma Ji to the seaside in a white sheep cart. Ma Ji boarded the coast, jumped off the horse, and the Dragon Girl said, Please take care of it, returned to the carriage and left, and walked away in a while. The sea water closed again and the dragon girl could no longer be seen, so Ma Ji returned to his hometown. Since Ma Ji went out to sea in a boat, everyone thought he was dead. When Ma Ji returned home, his family members were all surprised. Fortunately, the parents are still alive, but the wife has remarried. It was only then that Ma Ji realized that Long Nu had already predicted today's events when she said that he wanted him to keep righteousness. His father wanted Ma Ji to remarry, but Ma Ji didn't agree, but took a maid as his concubine. Ma Ji kept the three-year deadline in mind, and when he came to the South Island by boat, he saw two children sitting on the water floating, patting the water and laughing, neither moving nor sinking. Ma Ji approached to pull the child, a child smiled babblingly, grabbed Ma Ji's arm, and jumped into his arms. The other child was crying loudly, as if complaining that Ma Ji didn't come to pull him, and Ma Ji also pulled the child ashore. Upon closer inspection, the children were a boy and a girl, both of whom were beautiful. The child wears a corolla on his head, and the corolla is adorned with beautiful jade, and the beautiful jade is the red jade lotus. There was a kid on the child's back, and when he opened it, there was a letter which said, I think my parents-in-law are safe and well. Three years have passed in a hurry, and a red dust has separated us forever, and a bay of clear and shallow sea has made us hear from each other. Difficult to get through. Missing you so much, it finally turns into a dream, always looking far away, it only adds to the fatigue. Facing the vast blue sea, what can I do if I am filled with resentment? Thinking of China who was flying to the moon, she was still alone in the moon palace. Chinu was still facing Tianha with melancholy. Who am I? But can I love you forever? When I think of this, I always laugh through tears. After two months of separation, I gave birth to a pair of twins. 
Now they can babbling and learning in mother's arms. I can quite understand the words and smiles of adults. I can already find dates to eat, grab pears to eat, and I can live without my mother. So I give them to you respectfully. I present you as a gift the ruby lotus in the wreath as a token. When you hold the child on your lap, it is as if I were with you. My heart is comforted to hear that you will fulfill the old vows. Never in my life will I, if you change your mind, you will never change your mind until you die. The treasured items in the dressing box are no longer fragrant pomade. In the mirror, you see the latest dress, but you have not applied makeup for a long time. You are like a wanderer on a long journey, and I am a lonely even if the wife who keeps the vacant house cannot get close and the two places are separated, how can it be said that the husband and wife are not harmonious? But I am still thinking that although the parents-in-law have embraced their grandchildren, they have never met their daughter-in-law. It is reasonable to infer that it is also a shortcoming. One year after my mother-in-law passed away, I will go to the tomb to attend the funeral in person, as a way of being a daughter-in-law. From then on, the Dragon Palace will be safe and sound, and there will be no days when we meet, for I will live forever, and there may be a way to communicate. Please take care. This is the end of my heartfelt words. Ma Ji read the letter repeatedly, wiping away his tears. The two children hugged Ma Ji's neck and said, Go home! Ma Ji became more mournful, stroking the two children and saying, Do you know where home is? Go home! Ma Ji looked at the vast sea, which was boundless and connected to the sky, but he couldn't see the beautiful dragon girl and there was no way to pass between the smoke-like waves. I had no choice but to board the ship and return home with the child in my arms. Ma Ji knew that his mother would not live long, so he prepared all the clothes and supplies for the funeral and planted more than 100 pine trees and oak trees in the cemetery. A year later, my mother passed away. When the hearse came to the side of the tomb, I saw a woman in sackcloth and mourning standing in front of the tomb. When everyone was looking at her in amazement, suddenly there was a gust of wind, thunder roared, and then it rained heavily. In a blink of an eye, the woman no longer knew where she had gone. The newly planted pines and cypresses died a lot before, but they are all alive now. As his son Fuhai grew up, he often missed his mother. Once. He jumped into the sea and came back a few days later. The daughter, Long Gong, was unable to go because she was a girl, so she often closed the door and shed tears. One day, when the day suddenly darkened, the dragon girl came in suddenly and advised the dragon palace, you want to start a family yourself, why are you crying? She gave her an eight-foot high coral tree, a pack of diptrocarp, a hundred pearls and a pair of eight treasure inlaid gold boxes are used as dowry. Hearing Longnu's voice, Ma Ji broke into the house suddenly, holding Longnu's hand and crying. After a while, a thunder broke into the house, and the dragon girl disappeared without a trace. Isher said, putting on a false face to cater to customs, human feelings are no different from ghosts. People who love to eat scabs can be found anywhere in the world. People say the article is not bad if they consciously succumb to pleasing those who are ashamed, and people say the article is very good if they feel ashamed. If you go to the city to play openly as a man, there are probably very few people who will not be scared away. Where will the idiot Bien He, who was named Marquis of Ling Yang, go to cry bitterly with his priceless jade? Alas, glory and wealth can only be found in mirages.